Hi, this is Ariane. I hope you'll find my introduction to Viking Age garb helpful and informative. We usually think of the Vikings as people who lived in Scandinavia during the Viking Age and went raiding and pillaging all across the neighboring territories, but that's an oversimplification, a Hollywoodization, if you will. Like virtually every other culture at this time, whether they interacted with other cultures in a commercial or martial way depended on the relative benefits they saw to each method at any given time. They were just better sailors and explorers than pretty much everyone else at this time and managed to tick off some people who actually wrote things down. But they almost always did more trading than raiding. At home, the Vikingers, the people who went Viking, were farmers, craftspeople, and fishermen or herdsmen, like most people at this time. As they sailed, they looked for lands where they could settle, because their native Scandinavia wasn't the most hospitable land around, and because it helps to have trading outposts and lands with good merchandise. In every land they settled in, the Vikingers intermarried with the native populations, if there were any, with the possible exception of Greenland and North America. They settled in Western Russia, the British Isles, Northern France, Iceland, Greenland, and parts of Spain and Italy, among other places. Their trade outposts extended to the North America, Byzantium, and beyond. What people wore in the Viking Age depended on exactly where and when they lived, as well as their social status and occupation. Fashions changed over time and were affected by what neighboring groups wore. However, in general, you're looking at a layer of linen underclothes, which were more expensive but also more comfortable than the layers of wool you'd wear over them. The number of wool layers you'd wear would depend on how many it took to be comfortable in your climate. Silk and cotton were available depending on where and when you lived and tended to be used only in small amounts, if at all. Furs were used, but usually only on the inside of woolen garments as a lining. You might see a bit sticking out at the edges. Leather was used sparingly. You would also have socks and other garments that were nail bound, an early process similar to knitting. At first glance, the attire of a Viking Age man resembles the basic tunic and trues of many medieval reenactors. As the Viking Age progressed, this resemblance would increase as the Viking look evolved into the local version of the medieval tunic and trues. The most recognizably Viking parts of a Viking Age man's outfit would be the nail-bound socks, mittens, and caps, the wool winnegus wrapped around his calves, the unique shape of his headgear, and the armbands and other jewelry appreciated by all Viking Age people. If you watch the short video I've attached, you'll see a version of all the standard parts of a Viking Age man's outfit, with the exception of the nail-bound mittens and the jewelry that a wealthier man would wear. His fabric blanket could also be wrapped around him or pinned on as a cloak. Here you see two variations on a Viking Age woman's outfit. Everything is constructed of simple rectangles and triangles, sewn together with straight seams. In the picture on the left, the socks, winnegas, and low leather boots I'm wearing are hidden by the rest of my outfit. The first layer that you can see is my linen cirque, which has cuffs finished with narrow bands of silk to show off a little because silk was expensive, if you could get it. Over that, I'm wearing a long-sleeved floor-length wool cirque, which could apparently be my top dress if I wanted it to. But it's cold out, or maybe I just want to show off my jewelry, so I topped it with my blue wool hangarok with some swags of beads hung 
between the two big turtle brooches. You can see them better in the picture on the right, though, because my shoulders were cold enough that I added a striped wool shawl pinned in place with a trilobed brooch. I've tucked one corner of my shawl into my narrow tablet-woven belt to keep it from getting into things. The other corner is tucked up over my shoulder. In the picture on the right, I've replaced the shawl with a two-layer wool coat, which I unfortunately haven't had a chance to trim with fur yet. Either it's not that cold out or I'm showing off my bling though, because I've left the coat open. In both pictures, I've tied my hair into a low bun and wrapped a wool scarf around it. Word to the wise here, don't do this if you have sensitive skin. My forehead itched. Next time I'll go with one of my silk scarves or maybe a linen one. Over the scarf, I'm wearing a blue wool Jorvik cap tied loosely behind my bun. In addition to all the jewelry that you can see, I have an arm ring on each wrist. If you look closely, you can see them in the picture on the left. Here's a closer look at the different layers of my outfit. From left to right, we have the linen cirque, the wool cirque, the hanger rock, and my headgear and belt. I can tell you firsthand that it would have been easier to put the hanger rock on if I'd already had my hair up. It loves to get involved in everything I do. And now, to be completely dressed, a Viking Age lady might need a shawl, a coat, or both, depending on the weather. The shawl I wore earlier is enough for a chilly day in October, but for a brisk day in December, I need a bit more. I have my coat wrapped tight around me and belted in place, and I've wrapped my shawl up almost over my head. Since I don't have any nail-bound mittens yet, I stuck my hands into my sleeves. Is it just me, or do I look positively Russian in this picture? And for some Hollywood magic of my own, this entire photo shoot took place on a lovely summer day in Florida. Good thing I'm heat tolerant. The Viking coat was worn by both men and women, cut to thigh or knee length for men and approximately ankle length for women. Many nearby cultures had similar coats because great minds think alike. And besides, it's not like they didn't trade with each other. As you can see, it's very simply cut, just rectangles and triangles. It was probably lined with fur, at least when the maker had access to enough. Men could wear their coats open or belted like the man in the picture on the left. Women wore them open or belted too, like I'm doing in the second and the last pictures but grave finds make it seem like women also pin their coats closed with a brooch somewhere between the underbust and their waists. And why not? That way, you can show off your jewelry and still be pretty warm. As far as I know, there aren't any grave finds where a man has a brooch in that location. In Viking Age society, there were two main reasons to cover your head. Warmth and to keep your hair clean so you didn't have to wash it all the time. Modesty would eventually become a third reason as Christianity spread to Viking lands. But it was never the sole reason or even the main reason. People aren't stupid and suitable head coverings are a matter of life and death in cold weather. There's a lot of cold weather in Scandinavia. Viking Age head coverings varied widely, but were all relatively simple. The simplest was the nail-bound cap, which basically looks like a plain modern knit cap. It tended to be worn under the more interesting types of headgear because it did a good job of keeping the head warm. 
Rectangular veils and scarves could be worn loose or tied around a low bun. And Dublin caps and Jorvik caps, like the blue one I'm wearing in the picture on the left, are simple rectangles folded in half and tied loosely behind the neck or under the chin. I like to tie mine behind the neck better. It feels more secure and it looks less Amish. If you need a really warm hat, the fur-lined ruse cap will do the trick. And a skilled hood will help keep your shoulders and chest warm, not just your head. Most, if not all of these types of headgear were worn in more places than just the place where archaeologists first found them. Of course, not every reenactor lives within walking distance of the Arctic Circle. Some of us live closer to the equator. And for those of us in warmer climates, there are some simple ways you can make your Viking Age garb work for your climate. First and most obviously, use fewer layers. Wear one linen cirque under a wool cirque or a hanger rock instead of at least one of all three. Minimize your use of furs and linings. You'll probably want to use lighter summer weight wools or linens instead of thick fold or felted wools. You can also use cotton or silky bamboo yarn to replace wool yarns on nail bound items. But keep those extra layers, furs and wool meltings around for our couple weeks of winter and for wearing at Gulf Wars and other northerly events. Now, this list of sources is by no means an exhaustive one, but it is enough to get you started. And Carolyn Priest Dorman is someone the experts use as a reference. So have fun making your Viking Age garb, and thank you for taking my class. Have a great day.